Hi YouTube. I, unfortunately, I was filming earlier and missed um, the some kind of way the file got corrupted. Oh, anyway, in this pot I have carrots, um, ground veal, onions, two teaspoons of uh, fresh thyme that I got from the garden. Um, and that's it yeah mushrooms carrots ground veal thyme oh a splash of olive oil just just a little bit of olive oil and um if you can see there there's still some moisture down in there it's not a whole lot but it's a little um yeah i know all that looks like meat it's not the vast majority of that is uh mushrooms now Oh, I didn't even mention what I'm making. This is cottage pie, but it's in the title. Anyway, uh, to make this, you don't have to use veal. I'm using veal because that's what I have. I usually use lamb, um, but you can use ground beef. It doesn't matter. You can make, you can use ground beef, lamb, uh, veal, whatever, whatever you got that's ground. Uh, and you pretty much just want to chop everything up, put everything in a skillet. And I just let this cook down until the, the veal is um pretty well, it's browned already. In this pot, I have some potatoes that I sliced and I parboiled them. They're not done boiling. That's why they, they're, that one's a little broken, but it's, it won't completely break. I am cleaned them real good, left the skins on and um just slice them you know a decent slice like that and then once they got parboiled I turn the heat off pour the water off of them and they've just been sitting here with the top on so that's what you got there so I usually just go ahead and slice my potatoes on and get them on first and then I jump over here and start chopping up all my stuff um, so now that all this is browned and everything is tender, the mushrooms have cooked down, the carrots are tender. Now what I want to do is get a little bit of flour. Oh uh, yeah. Get a little bit of flour. And I just basically want to um Shake some over. I'm gonna get that to focus. I don't want to drop the whole sack in and then I'll ruin the whole dish. But anyway, that's probably about half a tablespoon. And then I just want to stir this in. And you don't want to wait until all of your liquid is gone. You want to do this while you still have a little bit of liquid in here because what you're doing is you're pouring this flour in and I'm just going to pinch some out now because I'm scared I'm going to waste the whole sack in and if I waste the whole sack in this on top of my camera troubles that would be some already some more troubles but um yeah so, yeah, somebody asked me what was cottage pie. I think that was Deborah. My short answer was it's something like shepherd's pie, but a little bit different. You can make it a lot of different ways. Um, this particular way is closest to Martha Stewart's recipe. Um, however, I've even made some edits to Martha Stewart's recipe because her recipe doesn't call for you to parboil the potatoes. She just wants you to basically simmer them down I mean uh, slice them really really thin and put them on top and just do it that way uh, I did it the first time I made this I did it that way I didn't care for it I didn't like the texture of the potatoes they were too hard um, so I never did it that way again after now what you're looking for on this when you're putting the flour in see how there's no there's no liquid left. It didn't cook away. My flour thickened it up. And then at that point, I turned the um, 
turn the heat off. So, sorry guys, I'm having to hold the camera in. I'm filming this with my phone. Uh, I put a little salt in to taste. You don't want to go overboard on the salt because you can always add more. Um, at the end, you just want to add a little. Because you do want this to have some flavor to it. Um, I'm also going to add in some black pepper. So, hold on guys, I'm going to come back after I crack in the black pepper. Can't do okay. that with one hand. Crack in the black pepper. And we're going to stir that up. Okay, you want to take last a bag ingredient. of frozen peas. Um, or if you have some fresh peas out of the garden, it'd be better, but my peas aren't ready yet. So, frozen it is. So, yeah, I just grabbed this, this bag. And it doesn't call for this many peas, however. I like peas. I like quite a bit of vegetables in there. Just like, it only called for two carrots in there. I think I put it in five. Um, it doesn't call for the mushrooms at all. That's just something I added because I like mushrooms. Same thing with this. Whole bag's going in frozen. So, I'm okay, going to pour these in. in. I know it looks like a lot of peas. Now, don't forget, I've turned the heat off on this. The peas are frozen. You just want to mix this up. And I'll be honest, the first time I made this recipe, I made it exactly how Martha Stewart said to make it. And that's usually what I do. And then after that, I, I see how I like it and how I want it. And the first thing I thought to myself was the amount of peas that they wanted to me was not enough peas, in my opinion. So, so you get the camera focused. There we go. So that's that. It's all mixed up. Now what we're going to do is get a, um, a casserole dish. And we're going to pour this mixture in a casserole dish. I'll come back when I got okay. poured in the casserole Back with dish. everything from there into there. And now what we're going to do is, now it's time for our potatoes. So instead of the traditional way of making it, where you uh, put mashed potatoes on top, these, you take your sliced potatoes and you layer them. Now my potatoes have been cooled off for a little while, so they're not that hot. They're hot enough though. They're getting hotter the deeper I go. Um, Alright, and this doesn't have to be pretty. When you look at Martha Stewart's picture, oh yeah, it's real pretty and nice, but she has people that work for her that do this stuff for her. I don't have kitchen minions. minions. Because um, these potatoes, the further down in this pot I go, the hotter they were getting. Um, I know on Martha Stewart's, they say something about doing one... Um, layer of potatoes I'm not really too anal about that I just make sure everything is covered and if some of your potatoes are like kind of done it's okay because sometimes the potatoes at the bottom may cook a little faster be a little more done or maybe if you cut them a little thinner it's like you see some of my slices are kind of breaking up on me a little. Yeah, I had some that were a little more done than others. But hey. It's all yummy for my tummy. spread these slices out and some of your slices will stick together once again it's all good and this is just I had one kind of really big rusted potato you can kind of use any kind of potato you want um, I'm gonna get this done oh, and then had some odds them. and end little pieces here and there scrape those out on top um, Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention to you guys that I put in the filling. I put in 
uh, two tablespoons of tomato paste. I forgot to mention that. So yeah, two tablespoons of tomato paste in that filling. Uh, and yeah, this is everything. Oh, put crushed black pepper and um, sea salt over the top. And now, this just needs to go into an oven. Everything in the um, the filling on the inside is cooked and the potatoes are for the most part cooked. But what you want to do is you just kind of want to um, bake this in the oven. Or you can even throw it under your broiler, really. Throw it under your broiler and let the uh, potatoes get nice and kind of brown and crispy. And then um, once that's done, it's done. So I'll come back and I'll show you when it comes out of the oven. All right, YouTube. It's done. The potatoes didn't really brown. I didn't. I, I should have put some butter or some olive oil or something on top to make it brown. But it's late. I'm tired. Time to give me a plate and taste. Okay, there we go. This is it plated up. Now, one must get a fork so that I can show you guys how it tastes. Hopefully, it's not too hot and I don't burn myself. So let's see. Of course, we have Iris the dog. Iris, you want some shepherd's pie? Oh, look at her sitting down. Iris, you want some? Sh Iris, you would not be. You can't be jumping up. Yes, the dog. So let's taste. Hmm. Oh, it's not too hot either. Oh, that's tasty. Oh, it's not killing me. It's not burning me all the pieces. So, yeah, it's pretty good. I can taste everything. Savory, but yet the peas give it a little bit of sweetness. And the carrots give it some sweetness. Oh, it's moist, but it's not. It's moist, but it's not, um, like, runny. Really good. I can even taste the mushrooms. Gives it a nice earthy flavor. So yeah. You guys try this recipe. It's really easy. It's not a lot of ingredients. And um it's um really good on cooler nights. It's gotten a little bit cooler here again, so um, I'm trying to get a few little meals in that are still kind of hearty, nice meals before it gets spring and summer. And, um, I don't want to cook these kind of meals because it heats the house up. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like I said, give it a go. Cottage pie. It's really good. I learned about this from a couple of friends I got in the UK. So, Paul and, um, CJ, if you're watching. Hey guys, uh, thanks for the great idea. Thanks for telling me about cottage pie. So, um, see you guys in the next video. Bye.